These are baby angelfish. They're only three days old, and at the moment they're hanging off the side of a mature sponge filter. At this stage of their development, the little angels are often referred to as wrigglers or wigglers, and I think the reason for the name is fairly obvious. Nonetheless, wrigglers can't swim or eat, and they live off of the energy reserves contained in their yolk sacs while they go through the final stages of their development. Let's take a closer look. Baby angelfish change super fast at this early stage of their life. In fact, just yesterday, they didn't even have pectoral fins, but today, they do. And in just a few days, these little angelfish will be free swimming and ready to hunt for food. Now, some of you may be wondering how these little fish are able to stay attached to this sponge filter without falling off. Well, they're able to do this because angelfish wrigglers have special structures on the top of the head that produce a sticky mucus. These structures are called adhesive glands, or cement glands, and they can be found in the wrigglers of many different species of cichlids. There are four of them here on top of the head, and two more in between the eyes for a total of six. The mucus that's secreted by these glands is incredibly sticky, and it causes the babies to become attached to each other, as well as to random objects in their surroundings. The production of mucus can also form long threads from which a dozen or more wrigglers can hang suspended. So, when the eggs of the angelfish hatch, the babies literally become attached to the place where they were born, and this keeps them from drifting away in the current or falling to the bottom of the river. And should the parents decide to move the wrigglers, which they often do, then the wrigglers will be able to reattach themselves to their new location. Be sure to notice how well-developed and prominent the eyes are, even at this early stage of their development. Here we can see the fish's gills, as well as its tiny beating heart. Okay, let's fast forward to about 12 hours from now and take another look at these baby angelfish. This little one has somehow become attached to the glass at the front of the tank. At this point, it's about four days old, and the yolk sac is now considerably smaller than it was yesterday. And by the end of tomorrow, these baby angelfish will be free swimming. The adhesive glands at the top of the fish's head will now begin to decrease in size each day until they disappear at around one week of age. But for now, they're still fully functioning and help keep these little angelfish from moving around too much, which makes it much easier to see all sorts of cool stuff. For instance, here's the brain of the angelfish. And those dark-colored spots are special pigment cells known as chromatophores. Those cells can change their size by expanding or contracting, which can rapidly change the color of the fish. This little white speck is called an otolith, or an ear stone, and there are three pairs of them in the inner ear just beneath the skull. These otoliths are responsible for helping the fish maintain its balance and sense its own movement as it swims. Most animals that have a backbone also have otoliths in the inner ear. And that brings us to the end of our journey deep inside the fascinating world of a baby angelfish. Hopefully, I was able to show you some things that you've never seen before and that you learned a thing or two along the way. If you're interested in learning more about angelfish as well as other types of freshwater fish, I have many other videos that can help you along the way. Alright, thanks for watching and I really hope that you have a beautiful day.